All right, welcome back everyone to another weather at a glance video. In today's forecast, we're going to be going over our first preliminary summer forecast for the summer season of 2023, all coming up in just a bit. All right, and on our first slide, we're going to be taking a look at that official NOAA Climate Prediction Center and so probability forecast. And here so far, we're going to take a look over here to the left side of the graph here. And as you can see, we're near 100% probability for neutral here for the ENSO neutral pattern. And that is because right now, where we are in the summer forecast, we are currently at an ENSO neutral status in the type of climate we are in right now. And as you can see, as we move throughout April, May, and June, we start to see a decrease in ENSO neutral probabilities and an increase in El Nino probability seen over here in the red. So as we move into the summer months here, we see an increased probability in El Nino probability over here. So we can see a more likelihood through the summertime that we go to El Nino and seeing those El Nino conditions this summer. So basically what this all means is how my forecast is going to be based in this video. We are going to be seeing an increased probability with El Nino conditions. So we are going to be basing our forecast off of a switch from ENSO neutral conditions to El Nino conditions throughout much of the summer season. Basically about early summer to midsummer, we are going to see that switch. And that's kind of where we're going to base our forecast off of in this video. All right, on our first slide, we're going to be going over our precipitation anomaly forecast for the summer forecast of 2023 here. And as you can see, we're going to start off in the Pacific Northwest here in that slightly below average region over here. And this includes the city of Seattle over here in Washington. And this goes all the way down into the Northern Rocky Mountains here. Now, again, uh, this is just talking about slightly below average conditions. We aren't expecting a big decrease in precipitation over the summer season. We're just expecting some slightly decreased conditions. So again, slightly below the numerical average that is set for your region up here in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies. So nothing too crazy. It's not going to be like you're going to have extreme droughts up in this region or anything like that. But we are expecting some slightly decreased conditions of precipitation throughout this region this summer. All right, now moving on down here to the south, we are looking at some slightly above average conditions for precipitation. Now, this includes much of the southern United States and all the way up into the eastern portions of New England over here. We do see a lot of these areas are expecting slightly above average precipitation conditions this summer. Now, again, like the slightly below average region over here, we aren't expecting anything too crazy too much of a change that you're going to be seeing here. So this doesn't mean substantial flooding, all kinds of precipitation in these areas. This basically just means you're going to see a slightly above average precipitation amount, slightly higher than the average numerical level that you do see every year. So again, nothing too crazy for this area, for these areas that are in the light green. This is just a slight increase forecasted for your summer season so far. Now, on the contrary, we're going to start over here in California with this above average region. Now, this is the dark green region that includes portions of San Francisco, California, all the way down to Los Angeles, California. And you can see over here, these areas are expecting above average conditions. So this is a region where you likely will notice an increased precipitation value and you likely will notice a lot more precipitation than what is usually seen in your region. So again, with that subtropical jet stream surging over these southern regions here, we will likely expect a lot more of those Pacific systems to move over Southern California and throughout California rather than up here in the Pacific Northwest. So we are seeing an increased precipitation value forecasted for the summer season for these areas. Now, again, this could lead to flooding for some of these areas because you guys aren't really prone to a lot of rainfall, and this could lead to increased saturation of soil, which could lead to larger flooding conditions this summer. Now, down here for the southeastern United States, we are also expecting above average rainfall this season. And this might also be a surpriser because a lot of these areas also see a lot of precipitation every season with the summer season conditions because we do see a lot of that uh, troughing action with the Pacific jet stream, but now we're seeing that subtropical jet stream come through too. That Pacific jet stream is now coming more further south, and we still are expecting a lot of surging precipitation through here. Again, that humidity is going to be high down here in the southeastern United States like usual, but now we are expecting increased precipitation with that surging subtropical jet stream that's going to be bringing even more moisture throughout these areas and a lot more storm systems that will be coming through the southeastern United States. All right, now moving on to our next slide here, we're taking a look at our temperature anomaly forecast for 
the summer forecast of 2023. And we're going to start up here in the northern United States here where we are expecting slightly warmer conditions, which is kind of a difference than what we've been seeing the past couple of years. But as you can see, we start up here in the Pacific Northwest, move our way throughout the Rockies and Great Plains and all the way into the Ohio Valley and northeastern United States here. Now, a lot of these areas are already see warm conditions in the summertime and hot conditions at times too, but we are expecting a slight increase in temperatures this season for you guys up here. And again, this is only slight. This isn't anything too crazy, but we are expecting slight temperature increases with that switch to El Nino throughout much of the earlier summer and midsummer. That's where that switch is expected to change, and we will see um, a bit of an increase in temperatures along the upper northern United States here. Now, an even further increase of temperatures is expected up here in the northern Rockies here uh, throughout Idaho, northwestern Wyoming, and all the way up into Montana here. So we see Great Falls, Montana is included in this as well. We are generally expecting warmer conditions, far warmer conditions up here in the northwest United States and in the northern Rockies. We are expecting a lot of these areas to be seeing um, far warmer conditions than normal again. So this is going to be anything too, too, too insane. Uh, but we are expecting some general warmer conditions here more so than the slightly warmer conditions. So maybe let's say you see 60s to 70s on average. You may be seeing some more of those 80s and 90s on average. Now, again, this is a pretty tricky terrain to forecast because we have a lot of those higher elevations. So if you're on top of a mountain of about 10 to 15,000 feet up in the atmosphere, that's not where you're going to be seeing. You're not going to see those 90s or anything like that. But if you're down in a valley that typically sees about 60 to 70 degree weather, you may see some of those 80s to 90s, depending on what China kind of terrain you're on up here in the northern Rockies. Now, down here in the southern United States, we're going to start off in our slightly below average region. And here, again, nothing too crazy is expected, just slightly cooler conditions than average. So this stretches all the way from Oregon all the way down to Texas. And we also see it goes through uh, Florida and southern Georgia here again. So this is going to be caused by the subtropical jet stream and those Pacific systems they are going to move through over into California. So we see those cooler conditions over here along the western coastline that is going to be caused by that troughing action that comes down through here further down to the southwestern United States. And we're also expecting those cooler conditions due to the subtropical jet stream bringing that precipitation over much of these areas and also over Florida as well. So again, nothing too crazy for these areas. It isn't going to be like you're going to see a 10 to 15 degree temperature difference every single day. This basically means you'll see a slight, a couple degrees below average what you normally would see during your average summer. Now over here in California, including the cities of Los Angeles here and just east of San Francisco, we do see below average temperature conditions. Now this is where you'll likely see a difference in your temperatures this summer. So that we're talking about cooler conditions, far cooler conditions than normal. And this is basically just showing you that you're going to have much of a decrease than you what, what you would normally see in your summer forecast. So maybe you usually see about some of those 70s to 80s. And if you're far south down here in the Los Angeles, maybe even up into those 90s to 100 degree temperatures, um, depending on where you are down here in the Southern California area, you may start to see a uh, 7 to 10 degree average uh, difference and change below your normal conditions. So again, cooler conditions, nothing too extreme, but we are expecting those cooler conditions that you will likely notice within this region. All right, now on our final forecast map here, we are talking about our overall forecast map. Now this is going to be showing you the basic conditions, your general condition that you will likely see most. This is what your region does to stand out on this summer forecast. So like usual, we're going to start up here in the western United States over here in the mild region. And as you can see, this region, like it states, is going to be giving you mild conditions throughout much of your summer season. Now, what this means by mild is nice temperatures, generally not getting too hot, generally not getting too cold, just nice conditions. And with the precipitation factor, too, we aren't expecting too much precipitation for these areas. Again, that may change depending on where you are, but we're not really expecting every day to be rainy and every day to be dry. We're expecting mild average conditions for much of these areas that are within this region. Now, moving on down here into the southern region here, we see this wet at times region that is in the light blue. And like this states, this is pretty self-explanatory, but at times you could see wetter conditions. So pretty dry conditions on average during the summer season, especially from Texas all the way up into California here. We do see some of those drier conditions during the summer season. But now we're starting to see a switch to where we could see some systems come through that could bring wet conditions to much of these areas. So again, we're not talking about every day, every week that you will see precipitation, but we are expecting some systems to bring precipitation through at times when you normally would not expect them. 
so we will be expecting some wet at times conditions throughout this region. Now moving up here into the hot region, this is a region that is also pretty self-explanatory. We have general hot conditions for this region. Now this is a typical region where you would normally expect hot conditions during the summer. And this includes portions of the Southwest United States all the way over into Texas and up into the Great Plains here. Now, all these areas normally do expect hot conditions, but we really aren't expecting much to change this season. So these areas will stay hot this summer. Not a lot of precipitation to come through, but we will still see precipitation systems come through with those low pressure systems that move through here. We will still see precipitation, so it's not going to be a below average precipitation for these areas, but we are expecting general hot conditions throughout the summer. All right, now moving up here to our largest region on the map. This is our orange region here, which is indicated by warmer conditions. Now, much of this region, again, we were talking about the northern United States is expecting those warmer than average conditions, and pretty much that's what your season is going to be based off of here. Warmer conditions, again, nothing too crazy up here, depending on where you are. Of course, if you're up in the northern Rockies here, you may see a far more increase in temperatures than you normally would see. But right now, we're just expecting warmer conditions, a nice warm summer, warm and hot summer up here, depending on where you are. And it's going to be a nice summer for you guys up here if you like the heat and increased temperatures. All right, now down here in our large red region, you can't miss it. This is our severe weather region on the map. And for a lot of weather enthusiasts, this is the main region you look for every forecast to see where you can expect those severe weather conditions. If you like storm chasing, or if you're just generally interested in the severe weather forecasts, this is pretty much where you want to be looking. So again, um, this doesn't mean every day you'll see severe weather, much like every other region, you won't be seeing those conditions every day. But a lot of the severe weather that is expected to happen will likely be happening based on this region. So basically in this region, this includes St. Louis, Missouri, Chicago, Illinois, Oklahoma City there, and Dallas, Texas. So all these areas are typical severe weather season regions, but throughout the summer, we usually expect those surging severe weather conditions to trend northward rather than down here in the south. But with the type of switch we are going through to El Nino, we are expecting those severe weather conditions to pretty much remain where we have placed them on the severe weather forecast for the spring forecast. So again, not really much changing from the spring season, maybe a little more northward than we had it before, but this is basically what we're going to be expecting throughout the summer for these areas. All right, now down here to the southeastern United States, we are expecting warm and wet conditions. Now this includes Atlanta, Georgia, uh, McAllen, Texas, over here to New Orleans, Louisiana, and down in Miami, Florida here. Um, and as you can see, a lot of these areas are generally going to be expecting those warm conditions. Now, if you're down here in Florida, we did talk about that slightly decrease in temperatures, but we're not really expecting anything too crazy. Again, your conditions are still going to be warm, even though you have a decrease in temperatures. Your conditions will still be warm, and a lot of these areas will expect warm weather, with wet conditions due to that subtropical action with that subtropical jet stream. All right, in our final region here, we are expecting stormy conditions here. Now, again, this doesn't mean every day you will see stormy conditions, but for a lot of these areas, anywhere from the southern United States up into the northeastern United States and throughout the mid-Atlantic, we are expecting those stormy, wet conditions to continue. Um, and that's basically what we're seeing anywhere from the northeast all the way down here to the south and through the severe weather region. We are expecting those wet conditions. But up here, generally, we'll see those thunderstorm action type of days where we see thunderstorms, possibly even severe weather, depending on what type of environment we're dealing with. But a lot of those storm tracks, anywhere from the north to the central to the south, we are expecting those storm tracks to converge up here in the Northeast United States. And we will expect pretty much stormy conditions throughout the summer season. All right, I want to thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. A big thanks to today's sources, NOAA Climate Prediction Center, where that chart came from discussing the ENSO forecast at the beginning of our forecast. Now, I would ask you to consider subscribing for more US forecasts free of charge. And I would ask you to consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.